The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice. Thanks for tuning in to Brothers on Law on Go Country 105. I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel. And we've been trial attorneys here in Los Angeles for over 40 years. On our show, we will discuss current events, talk about legal issues, and have some very entertaining guests stop by. So stay tuned every week for Brothers on Law right here on Go Country 105. Hello, and here we are back on Brothers on Law. I'm Rob Mandel. And I'm Larry Mandel. And, uh, hey, Larry, do you remember when you were like 15 years old and you had a motorcycle? I had a Yamaha 100. And you're riding around on this thing with no helmet. And no insurance. No insurance. Yeah. But it was a lot of fun and... My hair was blown in the wind. Yeah, free as a bee. But you know what? I think in the last 120 years since that was the case for you. Um, 125, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, things have changed a little yeah. bit. Not a good idea. No insurance. Uh, and that brings us to a very special guest we have today. It does. I, I'm so happy to have in the studio with us my buddy, Ted Amorosi, who is an insurance expert. Tell us about yourself, Ted, a little bit. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me, Rob and Larry. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've been... Welcome, uh, buddy. I was a high school teacher for a dozen years in California, and then I sort of got disenfranchised with education and wanted to look for another option. And 10 years ago, I made the choice to go into insurance, and it's been the best thing I've ever chosen. And you, what company are you with? Farmers Insurance. Uh, what type of insurance do you write, Ted? We try to write all lines, uh, home, auto, umbrella, rental properties. We do commercial properties as well, workers' compensation. Um, my wife also works with me in the agency, and she does health and employee benefits. So we try to become a one-stop shop for all of our clients. Yeah, you cover the whole gamut. Yeah, he does. And and with the wife, I mean, what a team you guys make. Thank you. Incredible. I, I know her. She's, she's awesome. She's an awesome human being. But, you know, we were talking about this idea of... You know, here, here's a guy on a motorcycle, a kid. Now, times have changed, and it's and it's a lot more dangerous out there uh, to ride around. And but why should a why should a kid on a motorcycle worry about liability insurance? Because the the chances of, of someone on a motorcycle hurting another person are are low. Why should they worry about that? Well, even though they're low, it's still an option. And more importantly, it shouldn't be the kid on the motorcycle worried about it. It should be the parents whose assets they're going to come after in the event of an accident. Right. But right. also, it's required by law now. Absolutely. If well, you don't have, well, if you don't have liability insurance, then your license could be suspended. Okay, but 15 grand, that's the minimum. Yeah. Right? What is 15 grand going to do for anybody? I mean, if you really hurt someone and you got minimum insurance, that's like not even a day in the hospital. But Rob, here's a segue and I want to talk to Ted about this. If you had a higher liability policy, even on your motorcycle, then you could attach to that a higher amount for what's called uninsured motorist. Uninsured and maybe motorist you can tell us, coverage. Rob. That's what I'm thinking. And let me ask Ted tell this. Us, tell us about that, Teddy. <laughs> let me ask Ted. So what is uninsured motorist? Uh, basically, in the state of California, you're looking at 15% of the vehicles that you drive by on an average day don't have any insurance. Another 15% are carrying our state minimums, which are the lowest in the country. Uh, so uninsured motorist covers you when the other driver's at fault, and they don't have enough coverage to pay the bill. Right. right. And, that's and when also, you're on a motorcycle, okay, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, Rob, I'm going to let I'm you. I'm just saying, when you're ahead. on a motorcycle, I mean, that's what you got to worry about, really, <clears throat> is getting hurt. If you get hurt, if so, man, and you go down on a bike, you're going to get hurt. There's just no two ways about it. And what if, if you had 15000 in uninsured motorist coverage, what's that going to do for you? That's going to get you to the hospital in an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah, look, and there's another aspect of uninsured motorists, and that's underinsured motorists. Well, it's the same thing. Well, it is, but it's part of it. And what that means is that if you have insurance and that the 
and it exceeds Wait a minute. We have an insurance expert sitting here, and you're telling him what that means. Well, Ted, listen, Ted. (laughs) All right. Let Ted tell us. Ted, tell us about underinsured motorists. I'm going to defer to Rob and allow you to to talk. (laughs) So in California, it's a cap limit coverage. So if somebody hits you with uh, state minimums, they have 15,000 in bodily injury, and you're uninsured motorist covers up to a hundred thousand then you have additional eighty five thousand inside of your policy it's not a total in addition to like we'd get to a hundred and fifteen so it's always important to carry a high limit on that because again there's so many vehicles on the road in california that have very little or no insurance whatsoever but doesn't that cost doesn't that cost a lot of money no uninsured motorist is actually one of our most affordable coverages and uh You know, with most carriers, Farmers is included in this. It's sort of like going to Costco, I like to tell some of my clients. You're sort of buying in bulk. So the price per thousand goes down dramatically as you increase your limits. It might cost, say, if we're just using easy numbers, might cost $100 for state minimums. Might cost $150 to be at umbrella qualifying limits, which really protect you. Right. And so a lot of people are clueless about this aspect of insurance. And it's and if they come to you, do you tell them, yeah, you should consider uninsured motorist and a higher limit? Yeah, absolutely. I, I really don't look at what my clients may bring to me as far as what they currently have. I look at what I can do to put them in a position where in that worst case scenario, the Mandel Law Firm's representing a client and they're at fault. I want the insurance company to be the target of financial litigation at every point. So if our clients will take our advice, we try to put them in the very best position possible. Uh, Every once in a while, they don't, but we'll go with whatever they decide after we provide all the information we possibly can so they can make an informed decision. And you also write homeowner's insurance, right? Yes, absolutely. And so with all these fires that we recently had, what can people do to protect themselves, let's say they have a loss. It could be from the smoke. It could be from the actual fire itself. What do you do to document or otherwise show what the value of your property or in real estate and personal property is? Well, the real estate part's pretty easy just because the home has public records and we've derived a reconstruction cost on that. Uh, it gets a little ticky tack sometimes with personal property because a lot of time clients won't take the time to document what they have. I always recommend that they do either an Excel spreadsheet or some sort of home inventory that I can save into our system, or in simplest forms, walk around your house with your cell phone and take a bunch of pictures and send them to your insurance agent. That'll certainly make the claims process much easier on the back end for them. And And when when do you do that? Yeah, uh, and you, 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 sorry, Larry, but that's are, right. are you are you are you doing that like once a year, or, or only when you buy the policy? Uh, we were, when we buy the when we bind the policy on the first new business, we try to get them to do that. Um, for all of my clients, when a policy is renewing, I reach out uh, via email and a phone call asking them for a meeting in order to review the policy. And at that point, we ask if there's been any dramatic changes. Right. You know, if they've done maybe an addition or they've added a bunch of property. Um, the other thing to understand is that, you know, there's a per item limit inside of your policy. So if you've got a $20,000 diamond ring, you're not going to get $20,000 from the insurance company unless you've documented the value of that and added it on in what we call a floater. So they have to tell you, uh, that they have a $25,000. That's a nice ring, by the way. Very nice ring. <laughs> and they have to tell you that they have this $25,000 ring. So if you don't get that input from your customer client, then they're not they're not going to be properly covered. Yeah, and that's why it's so important as an agent. I mean, I try to become a trusted advisor versus, say, a policy peddler who's chasing cheap premiums and trying to just sell as many things as I can. We try to put our clients in the position where they're protected. So we try to educate them first and foremost because there's a lot of misinformation out there about insurance. And you got to have it. You got, In other words, if you're worried about a fire sweeping through like this Woolsey fire just did, destroying everything in its path, but for these firefighters, you know, saving homes, if you didn't have the insurance, you're sunk, right? I mean, you're SOL, as they say. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah. And the worst time to realize that you have a poor insurance policy or maybe you weren't without insurance is right after you need to file a claim. Right. 
Have you suffered or been injured by someone else's negligence? When you need a legal team that will stand up for what is right, won't give up the fight and obtain justice, call 818-886-6600. Mandel Trial Lawyers specializes in personal injury cases of all types. Whether it's a car accident, product or premises liability, dog bite, or a catastrophic injury, Mandel Trial Lawyers are there for you when the fight is worth it. Call now for your free consultation. 818-886-6600. Let the scales of justice tip in your favor. I think where people make a big mistake, and we were talking about this earlier off the air, is that people will say, I have a complete coverage or full coverage, you know, and they think, oh, I have full coverage. That covers everything. Full coverage in their mind might just be the minimum policy, like in an auto policy. And also they have some collision coverage and things of that nature, but they really don't have proper protection. So full coverage. They don't have the mis- limits. Right. They that, need that, to that, boost that, their limits. That makes me want to circle back to the motorcycle and the cars and all that just for a sec. Because, you know, i I'm a, I'm a, an attorney. I understand what can happen if someone gets hurt and they don't have, and the other guy doesn't have much insurance or no insurance, and you don't have that uninsured motorist policy. And I'm thinking about like if it's my kid out there on a bike, or or even in a car, really. You know, I want to have a million bucks, both on the liability and that uninsured motorist stuff, because why? Well, you know, it's pretty simple. I've never, ever had a client complain after a claim that they had too much coverage. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it's nice to be able to put your head on the pillow at night knowing that in that worst case scenario, you're the cause for the SIG alert or you're part of a SIG alert and it's yeah. somebody else's fault, that the insurance carrier is going to do what they're functioning to do. Right. See, but I think some people have this issue as to cost benefit and they're weighing how much it's going to cost them in premiums as opposed to just having complying with the minimum requirement pursuant to California law. So you probably talk to them about that and weigh all those possibilities, right, Ted? Yeah, we always try to be cost effective, you know, but the way I put it to clients is you don't want cheap insurance because if you have a cheap policy on the way in, you can only expect a cheap process on the back end in the event of a claim. And that's the worst time to have a cheap process. So true. You know, it's, it's an important aspect of your life to have this insurance to protect yourself. And I think a lot of people just, well, they'll get their, their paperwork from the insurance company. It's a long policy, it's pages and pages, and they don't really read it. They don't pay attention to it. And I don't blame them in a certain way. But you should at least check out your declaration page, and maybe you can explain what that is. Well, a declaration page is simply that. It's the insurance company declaring what they cover. And that's the, that's the biggest part of an insurance policy is knowing what you have. And, Again, and you that's get why that it's important. Couple, I'm sorry. No, go it, ahead. it is important. And you get that a couple times a year from your carrier, right? Every time it renews. So on an auto policy, you'll get it every six months. On a home, you'll get it every year. Right. And it's just a sheet and here's your coverages and understand what you're, what's covered, what's not, what your limits are, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I'd like our audience to look at that. And then if they have any right questions. Right now. Everyone yeah. take out your deck pages All right. right now. No, wait. Take listen- a peek. They're listening to the radio show after the radio show. All right, show. after the radio And show. then look at your policy, the declaration page. And call your agent. Absolutely. And just say, well, what does this mean? I mean, why not? It's an important part of your life. Right. And it could make a difference between getting sued and not getting sued. But it is hard. It is hard out there right now. You know, a lot of people are uh, struggling, trying to, you know, make ends meet. And they have a budget. And, you know, I mean, if what do you do when it's a choice between... Uh, you know, food on the table or making the rent or making the mortgage and then insurance. You get what, the minimum, unfortunately. Well, At least what, you're covered. Well, but what do you, what, what do you talk, uh, what do you, you I, I'm, su- I'm sure you've had that conversation with folks, Ted. Right? Yeah, and, you know, more frequently than not, it's someone who's never been in a claim scenario who will make that decision. Take the minimum coverage, spend the least amount of money because they have insurance. Right. And they've met the minimum requirements. Uh, It's a much easier conversation when someone's been in a claim or had a family member in a claim and seen what happens when limits are low and everything's not covered and it gets really messy. So, again, it's one of those things. It's, you know, it's sort of like life insurance. People will go without life insurance and then usually they'll 
be prompted by some life event, a marriage, purchase of a first home, right. baby being born, a relative passing away without it. It's, it's usually those life events that trigger some sort of thought process on reevaluating what you have and making sure that it's right. So we want to trigger it now. We don't want the life event. We want it from listening to our show. Let's trigger it. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, brothersonlaw.com. We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the Brothers on Law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. You know, I guess part of it, too, though, is assets. If the person doesn't really have, they're, they're just starting out in business and they don't really have any assets to worry about, are they going to then just get the minimum policy? Uh, frequently, people look at it that way. But the big problem in the state of California is that they can attach to a home. They can attach and garnish wages for an unlimited time period. So by concept, you could have a terrible accident at age 21, have really bad limits, put someone into a wheelchair for the rest of their life. And the state of California is attaching to your wages until that debt's completely paid off. It's not a snap decision. You got to really think this stuff through. And even if you're struggling or you're on a budget, you kind of have to uh, sit down with a guy like yourself, right, Ted? And uh, analyze it carefully. Absolutely. And, you know, the problem is you get a lot of the 800 number companies where you can just go online and sort of make all your own choices. And when you fit your budget, that's great, but it might not fit your accident. Do you have a situation that comes to mind, you know, like, I don't want to say the word horror story, but, you know, something that, uh, a vignette that you could share with us where, where someone did fall short and, and, you know, it was heartbreaking for you? Yeah, we had a client a few years ago. It's funny that you mentioned that because I know we had chatted about, you know, a story like that and I, I had racked my brain thinking of one and we did have one. We had an appointment for a client to come in and put it in an umbrella policy. She already had high limits on her auto, but she was concerned with protecting her assets. An umbrella, if you don't know what that is, is an excess liability policy. It goes beyond your coverage limits. So your claim blows up your auto policy and there's not enough money there to cover the loss. The umbrella kicks in in increments of a million dollars. We go from one to 10 with our clients. Um, and that really protects you. I call that when you're sleep well at night coverage because nice. in the worst event, uh, the insurance carrier. But this lady had an appointment. It was July a few years ago. And she called me and she couldn't make the appointment. So we rescheduled it uh, for a month later. Uh, in between that uh, original appointment when we were going to put it in place and the one where she ended up coming in, she had an at-fault accident. And she got sued for three quarters of a million dollars. Wow. But we didn't have the umbrella in force at the time of the accident. What happened? Uh, we were able to sort of massage the claims process and we actually settled at her policy limit which was a quarter million dollars so she lucked out really yeah, she not, got very lucky but i have an instance where from our law firm where a doctor in his car hit our client who was on a motorcycle and the injuries were serious serious injuries and the doctor for some unknown reason had a hundred thousand dollar policy only and we brought a case against him, litigated it, and the doctor ended up contributing another $100,000. So it does happen. Out of his pocket. Out of his pocket. No and, insurance. You know, we don't relish in that, but we have an obligation to protect our client and to get a proper just recovery. Right. Yeah, and I've had many a situation. I, got, I, can, I can't even count how many times this has happened where I have a motorcyclist who's, got, who's gotten hit somebody else's fault, very serious injuries, and the other person has 15,000 or 25,000, enough for a day or two in the hospital. And this person maybe has a million or more valued case with all kinds of terrible catastrophic injuries. And on the bike, of course, also just 15 grand. No uh, high liability limits, no high uninsured motorist coverage or underinsured motorist coverage. And they're just left holding the bag. And there's nothing you can do. I want Because you know, the person weigh, doesn't have assets either. You yeah. Know? I want Ted to weigh in on this, though. If I'm a pedestrian and I'm walking down the street and I get hit by a driver who doesn't have insurance or only has the minimum, 
does my insurance, my automobile insurance, cover me? Let's say I'm on a bicycle or I'm a pedestrian. Skateboard. You're under, Skateboard. Your uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage would kick in on that. Yeah, That's why it's it. so important to carry such so a high important. limit, especially if, you're, if you ride a motorcycle. I mean, we've driven around Los Angeles for a long time now. It's not a real safe proposition. Again, 30% of the vehicles out there have state minimums or no insurance. And if you end up in the hospital with no coverage, you've got a really big bill coming your way, or you're prayerful that you have a good attorney who can help get that litigated. Can you, you know think of one, the- Rob? <laughs> oh, I I can think of two right now. There you go. We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the Brothers in Law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. Hey, what other red flags can you think about, Ted, that a person should look out for when purchasing insurance? Um, You know, again, going for cheap. You know, when you're looking at a a homeowner's policy, you want to know what kind of settlement you're going to get. And there's replacement cost on both your dwelling, your home, and on your personal property. And then there's with like a deductible. What kind of what kind of deductible may come in in front of the getting? No, the replacement cost is replacing it at current market value, getting you back to whole. Like as an example, in our policy for personal property, we replace all of your property at current market value, not a depreciated cost. And that's a huge thing for everyone to look at because the depreciated cost settlements are going to be much less in premium. That's right. You're going to save money, but you're going to lose money in the event of a claim because you're going to get your two-year-old TV that was $2,000. You're going to get $1,000 in in replacement cost for that. So it's a good idea to have receipts and to take those photos, like you said. So everybody go out there, take some photos of your more valuable items to protect yourself. It's not that hard, especially with phones that have cameras in them nowadays. Oh, absolutely. And it's a super easy process. And once you take those pictures, just get them over to your agent and they can upload them into your policy and it'll be there in the event of a claim. It's good stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I think we'll uh, talk about a few things that uh, we normally do on the show, Ted, if you don't mind. Great. And it may be uh, something that uh, you find interesting. Um I, I thought maybe we would have something on insurance today to talk about, but but uh, we're, we're going to talk about uh, something else. So this is called our Do You Know segment, and I'll let Larry uh, uh, take the reins on this. Larry, uh, uh, tell us about healthy child drinks in restaurants. Well, well wait, let me just interrupt you before you start. Ted insures restaurants. Uh, Do you not? Yeah, absolutely. Farmers, actually, we insure 20% of the restaurants in the state of California and have just a, a great product that's super competitive and premium. So if you're a restaurateur, we We'd got to call Ted. Give, and we're going to get Ted's number and everything at the end that's of the right. show. That's right. Okay, so Senate Bill 1192 mandates that child meals in restaurants that come with a drink have a healthy beverage as a drink default option. What does that mean? Well, such as milk, water, sparkling water, or flavored water with no added natural artificial sweeteners. And the bill takes effect January 1, 2019, so it's effect now. That just means we're not giving our kids as much junk food. But wait a minute. So if a kid had gone previously to a restaurant and said, hey, I want the the, uh, kid's meal, which is usually a hot dog (laughs) or a mac and cheese or something like that, they they didn't before have the option of getting milk water or sparkling water. I think what this bill does is it gives that these options, the milk, the healthy stuff, as the premium item, as the first item to oh, be looked at. Oh, as the default option. Item. Yeah, you gotta All think right. about that. Now, what do you what do your restaurant owners think about something like that, Ted? Um. You know, in the state of California, it's tough to do business sometimes. And, you know, at least my opinion, the more litigation and regulation we put in, the tougher we make it on business owners. Yeah, but isn't it good to have kid when you're taking your kid to a restaurant instead of automatically feeding them a Coke or a pet or a Pepsi, you know, some kind of soda, you're saying, hey, how about water? How about how about milk? You know, instead of sugar, sugar, sugar. Oh, absolutely. But some would say that that's up to the parent. Why? put it on the restaurant to have to do that. That is that is an interesting debate that we could have 
uh, an, another moment, yeah. unless Ted wants to talk about that. Because he knows kids, too. He was a high school a teacher, a yeah. football coach. Cool. It's a super honorable profession. And, you know, I still have some great longtime friends who are teachers and educators, and they bust their tails to try to help yes, kids every do. day. Um, and that's probably the one part of that that I really miss. I miss uh, being a football coach. I miss being an educator where you can really have an impact on kids. Uh, luckily, I've been able to pick that up by coaching my uh, son's baseball and my daughter's softball teams over the last couple of years. So that's filled the gap for sure. That's good. And Rob, I know you were going with the teachers don't get enough pay. They don't. Yeah. And I we need, so agree with that. Yeah. Hey, Rob. Yes, sir. What about the tip of the day? What about it? Well, can you tell us the tip of the day? Okay. Uh, do you want to learn CPR? Check with your local Red Cross for certified CPR classes near you. You can save a life one day. Yep. Or one day you can save a life, however you might hey, say that. It's yeah. a good thing. Right. right? It is a good thing. Hey, how about um, the Mandel message box? Now it's time to check the Mandel message box. All right, well, Debbie from our Instagram page DM'd us. I'm putting up a fence between mine and my neighbor's property on the property line. Legally, am I responsible for the cost of the fence or do I split it with my neighbor? What happens in the future sale of my property or theirs regarding the fence? I was told my neighbor is supposed to get the quote unquote good looking side of the fence. Is this true? Even if I incur all the cost myself? A lot of questions in that. What do you think, Rob? Wow. Well, again, uh, I'm uh, reluctant to give legal advice over the radio, but um, I would think that most people do split the cost of fences. I don't think there's any obligation that the neighbor get the better side of the fence. I mean, if she's putting up the fence, but I think it's a good thing to try and work these things out with a neighbor. But if you get into a tussle, then you need to find someone who's a real estate lawyer or someone like that to help you iron out any kind of uh, dispute that might arise. But generally speaking, there's a lot of fences. There's a lot of uh, shared walls in our communities. And I don't think too many people are fighting over these things. Yeah. So I think that the, the same thing to do is to work out a deal with the neighbor that you're either splitting it or if you're putting it up, then... You know, it looks the way you want it to look. It's on your side of the property line. So, yeah, exactly, Rob. Because, and the tone of the letter sounds like it's already somewhat contentious, but the best thing to do is to reach out to the neighbor and work out a deal. Right. You know? Right. Because we don't, we all want to mend fences. Oh, right? that's, that's a good defense, Rob. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Ted, um, you know what? Thanks so much for taking the time and come in and, and talk to us today. You know, learn quite a bit from you. And, and there's we could be really talking to you all day. Ted, tell our listeners how they can get a hold of you. Well, our office is in La Crescenta. Again, we're a farmer's agency first and foremost. And again, the last name's Amorosi, A-M-O-R-O-S-I. Uh, if you want to call the office, we're there Monday through Friday, 818-495-6100. How about a uh, website? Uh, Farmers.com backslash A Amorosi. Probably I, easier to do a, a search. And again, the phone number was 818-495-6100. Good, good. And I can, I can tell you from my own experience, this gentleman is available 24-7. Maybe I shouldn't say that on the radio. Well, most but, of our, all of yeah. our clients do get my cell phone number. Yeah. So if they need to reach out to us with anything after hours, we try to be as available as we possibly can for them. Yeah, and, and call he, him. Oh. Yeah, call him because a, he returns calls. For a competitive quote at the very least. Absolutely. Know, compare Absolutely. prices. Why not? All right. Well, we want to thank Ted Amorosi for coming in. And again, like I said, it was a pleasure, Ted. So thank you, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. You guys are great. You got it, man. Thanks. So I think it's about time to wrap it up. We want to thank you for tuning in and catch us next week right here on Go Country 105. And just remember, let the scales of justice tip in your favor. The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice.